This is the one that I take to demonstrations and also melt aluminum with it. So you just <laughs> this is the, the platina. No, no, the, we have more powerful. So this is 100 and then there's 250 and then there's 1.2 megawatt. That's thermal ratings. Yeah, but, but for normal cooking, you don't really need that power. No, but at this power rating, yeah, second, at this power rating, <laughs> yeah, exactly. At this power rating, it's, uh, you can cook not for a family, but for an entire village. Yeah, so, you know, large refugee settings, mm -hmm. that be, if communal cooking is, is accepted in that community, mm -hmm. then that becomes very interesting. Mm -hmm. Institutional stoves, hospitals, mm -hmm. refugee camps. Um, also for your housing and heating houses. Right. Uh, right. Exactly. How do you, can you how, in the more advanced ones? How do you is get get out the energy? And the the well, they're actually the, 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 this is as advanced as that. The, yeah. the it's just yeah. it's the air. Yeah. It's the, the air spinning the right way and coming out. And the nice thing about air being the main structural component is it doesn't rust. It's cheap. It doesn't wear out. So. Um, if you're using this for heat, obviously you're going to want a, a higher temperature unit. So this one would not heat a room, although I think it's already going to be warmer here than it was before. Um, uh, and you can see as, as this gets darker and darker, that that's going to get bluer and bluer. Um, you go for a higher uh, power rating, but then you also need something to radiate that heat. So think of an upside down pot. Yeah and that surface gets hot, and then that radiates out. Mm -hmm. But you'll need a chimney, you'll need some... But there's somebody else who doesn't want to cook, they just want to get out the energy. Right. How, how does that work? Well, there are a couple of different ways. Yeah. There are lots of ways to get heat out of uh, energy out of heat. So you can do thermoelectrics if you have low power, low efficiency though, but easy to use. You can go to steam turbines if you need lots of power. Yeah. It's very simple. Okay, who... I'm sure I understood that. They put those on the top. Yeah, this is the top plate. So same if instead of this top plate, thank you. Can I leave you with one or yeah, so? Yeah. So the inner cylinder fits in here. The and outer cylinder fits in there. Out so much more in. Yeah. Unbelievable. So it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but so. Uh, What's in there? <laughs> no. Okay. How many of you sniffed before? Yeah. Yeah. Please sniff again. Don't set your hair on fire. It's a <laughs> just, it's good, good just, safety. Just yeah, yeah. It is. It's you should smell heat and warm wood, but not. So at this point, we're in full pyrolytic mode. And you can see, if we can turn the light off, the flame gets very blue then. So been talking about the pH of the, the pH I haven't mentioned no. yet, but if you look now and you can see there are no red dots below, absolutely none. And it'll do that for the next two to three hours. So by having no combustions of the solids, I have no possibility to make ash. By having no ash, I can't have a higher pH. So the pH that comes out of the Lucia stove is predominantly neutral, so someplace between 7 and 7.5. You can regulate it if you want more pH, but between 7 and 7.5 is what's going to come out. So since it's neutral, already one of the elements that you know you can put it into the soil without having to worry about alter the surrounding pHs. The other thing to keep in mind is since the inert gases are the ones that are getting heated and going through, oxygen's gone, but nitrogen doesn't burn. So the nitrogen gets pulled through and the nitrogen, as the pyrolysis is taking place, adheres to the char. So if you look at the spectrographic analyses of these chars, you'll see a peak where the nitrogen is for all the different biomasses that we've been testing. Which is good for the soil. Yeah. More nitrogen. I mean, how much energy is used in the United States alone? How much of the natural gas is used just to produce nitrogen for agriculture? So if yeah. you could do that, you've already done an energy savings. Yeah. Yeah. What you're also saying is that since the the biochar is neutral, if the soil is acidic, it will balance the soil also. And That's right. And also the other way around. Exactly. Right. So I, I read yesterday that Sweden was the cost for reducing the runoff to the sea from uh, agricultural nutrients is right. uh, 2.5 billion euros. So obviously, if we put a lot of char in the soil, we would. Uh, that's an added benefit. If we won't have as much runoff, and the the sea, the Baltic it's, Sea, will it's, not be it's as. A, uh, it, it could be it could be double advantages. One, dig a trench around the areas which are over fertilized. 
when it rains, the soil runoff would go and get naturally absorbed by the char. That char then gets precharged with nutrients. Mm. Not only has that prevented runoff into the sea, which kills the sea with the eutrophication and silt, but then that char itself is more nutritious and more valuable, and then you can sell that to farmers who need to put that in their soils, and the cycle becomes virtuous. Mm. So, two point, how much billion? 2.5 billion 2.5 euro. euro, just to prevent runoff. And how much do farmers spend on fertilizer a year? No idea, a lot. Combine the two, mm. and that's a possibility. Mm. All the while, while sequestering CO2. Mm. Because much? for every kilo of biochar that's coming out of this, we've sequestered about three kilos of CO2. Yeah, and uh, the soil can hold enormous amounts of, uh, of carbon. I go very yeah. cautiously with that yeah. because the biochar needs to be applied and you, you need to know what the qualities are of the biochar, what the qualities of the soil and what the plant's needs are. Right. And you apply it wisely in the same way that mm, you would never take a chemical fertilizer and say, I've put in two liters and it worked well, so now I'll put in a thousand liters and it'll work better. No, it will kill the plants. The same thing with biochar needs to be done in a cautious manner and know what you're doing. So, but that's, I mean, we've done that and with chemicals. Okay. Why not do it with a permaculture solution as well? And maybe also you need to crush it a little bit. Not necessarily. So I mean, some people, uh, some people say crush it, but the nice thing about this is it's easy to handle. It doesn't make dust. It's very stable. It sits in the ground. Uh, it helps the soil be less dense. So if a plant, if you think, if it takes energy to push roots through hard things, if there's more space, the plant spends less time building the roots and more time building the food.